good morning guys we sitting out here having a little bit of coffee and I know I still sound like I just got out of bed we trying to get the sleep worked out of our eyes and whatnot what we're gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate to you how I tie these uh, limb hooks um you saw my other video we were down there fishing and man they done got all out of sorts just from adjusting them and twisting them up or something getting tangled up having to cut them loose and change hooks and stuff like that in the swamp they just all got mixed all up so if you'll see i done i've done redone most of them because i didn't want to make a whole video of uh just sitting here tying hook after hook but what i do is on my main line i wanted it about uh, six foot long give or take don't have to be I tie overhand just a loop on one end and y'all have to forgive me for snotting I've got a terrible cold I've had for the last couple of days summertime cold I heard somebody saying oh it's pollen man we had pollen back I don't know how this is some type of virus it ain't the coronavirus because my wife was having to go to a graduation and she went and got tested when she caught it but my mom and daddy doesn't have it you heat that end up with your lighter twist that till it comes to a point to where you can poke it right on through that that's a one ounce sinker i think most of these right here are one i use three quarters sometimes just whatever i can get my hands on tie that in there pull this up and put another overhand loop it's pretty simple All right, once you've got that in there, we take one of our swivels. Poke the loop through the eye, and pull the swivel back through the loop. You just got it looped on there. All right, we got that part made. Now I take my tarred bank line that most of you guys are in love with because Dave Cattleberry swears by it. And it is good bank line. We tie overhand loop in that. I know y'all liking hearing the roosters out there saying, come on now. I love to sit here and drink coffee and listen to the roosters. I was originally going to film this video with our cabin over here. But my dad's been over there running a chop saw. It's worse than the roosters. Okay, now you notice I cut that line with my lighter because take your pocket knife and cut it and then have to light it again. It just don't make no sense to me. So, well, what I do here is I tie two loops on this. Now you want to keep this piece kind of short because that distance between the end of those loops is where your hook's going to be from your lead pretty much. Pretty much, pretty much. Maybe even a little longer. So, and usually I pick the shortest one. Don't really matter. Long as you can get your hook eye through the other one. Okay, loop that up. All right, now we're doing big hooks. I'm going to add this one to my big hook roll. Oh. Uh, I take that and I poke that through the front of that hook and when I say the front I'm talking about the side towards the point of the hook and loop it down and the reason I do that is I discovered running them the other way I was missing some fish because the pressure is on the top of this hook right here when you pull up it's trying to pull that forward supposedly we'll see but anyway when i get that done i hook that in the loop of my last hook we just roll that up now when i get ready to see how many i got i count my sinkers one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen forty fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty that's just what i wanted on that roll twenty all right. 
We're going to tie one more with a little bit different camera angle. But uh, these smaller hooks, I had to put white on there because I didn't have no more pink string. And then I fooled around and found my other pink string. But look how bad faded it is. And the reason it's so bad faded is they used this to square up a building when I was doing construction. So I do have another piece of pink over here. What I do want to show you right quick before we move on to the next project. There's a lot of fancy ways to tie these hooks. You can put all these swivels, all kind of everything you want to put on them. And uh, that all works real well. I know guys that put mono on there. You can take this piece of mono, snail it on your hook, tie your loop on there, hook that loop to your swivel, and you've got a mono leader that supposedly catfish can't see your line. My only problem with that is whenever I let go with just that hook on there, it tries to coil up like this. Now, when I pull it straight on that board, it's not going to do that, obviously. But whenever you drop it in the water, it... I don't know. I just don't like it the way it, this stiff line coils up too much. Uh, so I don't necessarily like to use it. It's probably a good thing. And next thing, you care, you spend a bunch of effort making some really fancy hooks and hang them out there in the swamp. One of them rednecks is going to come by and gather up all your stuff. So anyway, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to tell you the truth right here. You take this piece of string. You can take your old junkie hook. You can hook that hook on there and you got a hook on a piece of string with two loops. Decide whereabouts you want your weight. And there's a nut. Probably about a five eighths nut. Maybe a three quarter, I don't know. Looks like a five eighths to me or 11 sixteenths. You can loop that nut around in that loop right there. And you can go right there and catch a fish with that line. I promise you, that'll catch a fish. It don't take all these fancy things to catch a fish. The reason I like to tie them like I'm tying with the swivels and all that, that roll of line that I just cut up that I was fishing with the other day, I bet you those were about eight years old. Seven or eight years old, no joke. Oh. Uh, that twisted nylon lasts longer. I've had some braid. The braided nylon, I had a roll of yellow that I made some beautiful hooks, nice hooks. The second year I went to running them, they went to coming apart. That braid just, I don't know, it's made out of something different. It wouldn't hold up. I had a roll of green and it done the same thing. Two different companies, so I don't, I don't blame it on the company. All right. We're going to tie one more like with these uh, thin ones because I got something else right here I want to show you a little trick on. So we're going to run us off a little bit of this. And I usually hang it off the edge of that table. Burn it in too with my lighter. That way the ends is glued together. I don't have to worry about it coming unfreed. Go ahead and tie some weight on here. I mean a loop on here and put a weight on it. We got a weight wrench here. Ooh, that end right there, I didn't do it too well. Oh, right. I hate I keep sniffling on this film for y'all. You're just gonna have to bear with me. You get that done, loop. Now on this, main string where you wait your loops don't have to be real big you can tie small loops if you want because you know how i'm gonna wrap them now the reason i like these long <coughs> excuse me is when you get to the water you can drop that weight down there until it hits the bottom on the limb or whatever or, or whatever you think and then pull it back up you can if it's shallow you can adjust that up and just wrap that around the limb so it it allows you to uh fish now all right now I've, I've run it low on swivels you set swivels got that little snap thing on there i'm going to show you how to use that snap you got to get your multi-tool out you grab that snap like this and it's the best way to use this little snap thing you squeeze right back there where it's uh 
put together and grab a hole there and tear that little part off and pull it off and you throw that snap part over yonder and you use your swivel y'all remember that because that swivel will flat cost you a fish I didn't seen it happen Or either a limb will get hung up in it and it'll all be to pieces. All right. Now let's pull out some of our tarred bank line right here. Them dogs done got excited about something out there. Early in the mornings out here in the country, there's a lot of critters get to rambling around. Ain't no telling what they've discovered. All right. Now, what I wanted to show you is in the event that you're using on these white line, I've got smaller hooks. This is my smaller line. So in the event you're using smaller hooks, all right, you get you piece of tarred bank line right here you got your two loops on it we're gonna go ahead and put it on our string right here on our swivel alright then you get your hook got your small eye in it you're trying to go through the front of it so you take your piece of mono right here you run it through the back loop it through your loop on your tarred bank line then go back through the eye of your hook and it'll pull it right through there see that you couldn't hardly poke it through there and then you loop it you got it look at there you got it looped on your hook good on your hook good uh, if you dig at that tarred bank line with y'all like a and, and that all is a handy deal on your multi-tool right here but it all uh, you'll fray your line out hook that on there roll that up now that's our smaller hooks there on that one. We're going to tie one more with a little different view. Alright, we're going to have to hurry up. This camera here don't seem like it's hold, got a lot of battery in it. But we're going to tie our overhand loop. Make sure our other hand got a good point on it. Take our lid, poke it through, drop it down. Now on this line, like I said, we like to keep our... Well, sir. Keep our loop small. Take my swivel. We just run that through like that, lay that down, and get our tarred bank line. I just kind of stick it somewhere right there. And I like a, a little bit larger loop on here. Now I look at them, and whichever one of them is the smaller loop, I generally put it right here on that. And I 
and I just I loop everything like this because it makes it easier and then right, we got some of these circle hooks these are five volt I ain't real particular about what size this is some of my big ones we're gonna wind up with 21 on that hook but that's all right we go in the front and see that's just a little bit aggravating let me show you this mono trick <clears throat> Go in the back, poke it through your loop, come back out through there, and see how that pulled that right through right quick. And that's it. That's a done deal, boys. All right. We got them made. I had to brush through that other with that other camera. I got a different action camera, but I didn't have the battery charged all the way up. Now the way I keep my strain from coming all out of whack is I burn that in like this, get it hot, and then I stick it down. That way you can keep up with it. Uh, I've got a little bit of other paraphernalia laying around. I may wind up tying the few more small hooks but I don't want to tie any more large ones uh, I need to put this last one I just tied on my roll of big hooks here so now we got 21 on there alright and I don't know what we're going to we're going to put the one with the nut we got on there too that's the first one we're going to put off. We'll have 22 because we got one right here that's got a, a nut for a weight. It'll match me because I'm a nut. Alright, so we got them two done. And uh, I've got another piece of... Let's see. A little snail that on there just for the sake of doing it. Go ahead and overhand that. Now I got me a leader to put on one of my poles there. Otherwise, thank y'all for watching my videos, and we'll see y'all next time on Spirit of the Outdoors. Y'all have a good one.